day two starts with an altogether healthier breakfast because today I won't be doing so much on the floor so I can afford to fill my stomach without fear of having a messy accident. So it's just before the opening of the show on day two. This is the long day, this is the Saturday. So it's probably gonna be busier. Um, so it's good that most of the messy stuff under the car is done. Um, I did want to, I don't do wandering around through as much because that is for clever people like Hubnut and Matt and uh, that lass. But I did wanna show you this because it's awesome. It's a Rover 10. where it all began. But I love this thing. I've never really had an interest in vintage cars, but the older I get, the more I hanker after stuff like this. We are under the car. I need to fill it with oil before I forget, or ATF. There's a lot of uh, discussion about whether these should be run on ATF or gear oil, but the, uh, the gearbox rebuilder told me use ATF, so that's what I'm gonna use. So I've got the filler plug out, and I've got to now go and get my suction pipe thing and pump the oil in without pissing it everywhere. But before I do that, I'll need to reconnect the speedo cable drive, um, and then we uh, can start on that messy operation and try and make as little mess as possible on the NEC's nice clean floor. Guess where I am? It's Matt's Crown Vic at the iDrive Classic, Fewers Driving and um, Hubnut stand. So yeah, pretty cool. And um, I saw this in his video, but uh, it is genius. I might have to make something similar. I doubt he's gonna patent this and sell it, but check that for a cup holder. Uh, yeah, good work, Matt. Just popped up to the shoppy bit of uh, the show to buy some uh, Loctite for a couple of bolts that go into the bottom of the bell housing area, but it's beneficial to seal them off, so got that. Bought some headlining adhesive to just recover the deep in the trims, which I might do tomorrow. Then while I was up there, my hoarding tendencies took over again, and I bought a brand new old stock Girling clutch master cylinder, because you can buy pattern part ones but they're generally crap so I had that while I saw it Ugh. oh my god I'm so glad I bought this wheelie crawler thing it's uh, been a godsend I've got my two bolts and I'm putting sealer in them I don't this is one of these puzzles I've never really worked it out basically there's two holes up here that go up into the back of the block between this tin shield and the underside of the block if you shove a screwdriver in there, it is a blind hole, but I, from memory I had a problem with one once where actually the drilling went through into the crankcase and it leaked oil, so I've cleaned all of the crap off of these, I'm going to put some of that blue RTV I've just bought on these and bosh them in and hopefully it will not leak. I've just been playing, I've been doing wiring on a Montego. Basically, uh, the fuel pump wouldn't switch on because there was a couple of dead relays and the guy had bought the right hole. His name's Chris, I've met him a few times at MG festivals and stuff and rover shows. And um, yeah, he had bought a couple of new pin, five pin relays, but didn't understand that the, uh, although they got five pins, they worked differently internally. So one was a make and break, but the other one was a switch on excuse me two circuits so we've got through the bottom of that and hopefully he'll have a running Montego by the end of the day just um, opened up my packet for super pro gearbox support bush so that can go back and that goes up in there like so and then you've got this uh, lock nut which will go on the stud as well and then you can set the gearbox height 
um, and the sort of anti gibberiness of it all. There should be a diagram in the workshop manual which tells you the distance you need between here and here, but uh, I can't find the right page, so I'm just going to bosh that in there and then worry about it later. It's about to get messy. Ugh. I've got my ETF, I've got my syringy thing. I'm going to try and get ATF up in that hole there without getting sh well stuff everywhere. Right, that didn't go too badly. Uh, there's not too much on the floor. I haven't got it in my eyes. Oh, over there. Anyway, it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So that's good. The other good thing is I have found in the book the clearance I should have between the top side of that bush and the underside of the cross member. So I've clamped it up too much, so I'm just gonna undo the lock now, undo that, wind it down, then that'll give me the required Rover prescribed amount of jibber so that the box works nicely with the prop and doesn't create undue vibration. Uh, I didn't mean to show you a shot of my groin, but happy accident. Under here, I have started fitting the prop shaft. I've replaced it. The original one, when you grabbed the input, end and then the output you sort of rotated it in your hands like that you could feel play in the joints so this one is out of a vitesse but it was a low mileage one um, and there's minimal play so hopefully that should uh, reduce sort of the uh, the feelings of backlash it's not backlash because the diff's good it's um drive line swap basically should make for nicer driving all the way around. I've reset that bush with a three millimeter gap film, three millimeter gap and done the lock nut up. And I'm just going through and doing all of that clobber. SD ones are weird that the props are all the same length, but the actual diameter of the tube and the way they're balanced is different. And I think, and I don't know, but they're basically, um, the different cars will be balanced for the prop to rotate at different speeds, if that makes sense. So the balance will be for the, the uh, its duty cycle and most of the time at the speeds it's going to be doing the revolution revolutions the prop's going to do so let's say it was geared so that this was doing I don't know 3000 rpm and the car was being driven into fifth it's not quite right but basically they would balance this so that for most of the time it was running it was happy in its balance <sighs> terrible terrible explanation but hopefully you understand what I mean I need a break from crawling around on the floor. So if you're watching my videos, you will probably like SD1s. So I will give you a tour of JJ's absolutely amazing single plenum Rover SD1 Vitesse. Single plenum meaning it has one inlet butterfly. We'll go around that side. You probably all know this anyway, but uh, you have like the throttle spindle there, one big butterfly in the middle and it opens and closes in a conventional way. The twin plenums were this sort of chamber, but it had two ports, uh, one about here, one about there. Still run off one airflow meter, but it was for homologation purposes for the touring cars, the Group A touring cars. This um, is a very original car for the age. The only things that are not quite right is, and JJ won't mind me saying this, it's not me being picky or anything, but, Obviously it's lost its viscous and it would have had a fan shroud and he's replaced that with a Ken Loaf, which is probably a good idea, mechanically probably more efficient. This being a post-84 car, it shouldn't have the arch spats because they look but they look so goddamn cool that he's fitted them and that's an entirely sensible thing to do. Um, post-84 it's got the Burr Walnut, got the big um, trip computer, normal Vitesse seats. It's got the deep chin front spoiler and JJ basically spent eight years taking this thing to a bare shell, replacing all the panels and basically did an unbelievable job and it is an absolute stunner. John Jones, there you go. Yeah, it's a, a proper nice car. So that's a three and a half litre fuel injected V8, 190 horsepower, Lucas flapper fuel injection, manual box, and um, the Vitesses have the 15 inch lattice alloys. They have the bigger AP twin caliper, oh, sorry, twin pist four piston calipers, vented discs, nice cars. My V8S, which has the 
funky little headlight wash wipers in it which don't currently work but we'll do black bumpers nice bits and pieces then this is Nigel's rather nice 80 what is it 85 um, this is a twin carb v8 auto and it's a van and plas so it has the nice comfy seats uh, I'm not sure this one has aircon. No, this one doesn't have aircon. I think it's got pretty much everything else extra. Like my police car, it's got the electronically controlled um, V8 twin SUs. So it has a, a stepper motor on the side run by an ECU to act as the chokes. So for the time, quite advanced. That stuff later then went on to the um, Montegos and Maestros and even I think minis of the era. So yeah, that's a quick whistle stop tour. And um, somebody's gone off to go and get me a pint. And I'm hoping they turn up because I'm parched. Oh yeah, that's uh, very welcome. Well, as much as having a beer was extremely welcome, it was not particularly conducive to work. So um, yeah, I've not really done very much other than doze and chat for the last hour. But. Uh, I'm kind of determined to get the exhaust on and up now before I go back home. It's about 10 past five before I say home. I mean the hotel room to veg out, watch TV. Uh, when I dummy mounted the exhaust, I fitted the new fire rings, but I didn't put any assembly paste on because I um, wasn't actually sure whether you needed it or not. But I shall do this time and that'll give it a little bit more additional sealing. Uh, also make a lovely mess in my engine bay, but never mind. So gonna put this on, got all my hardware for downpipes to the rest of the system, and uh, yeah, we will be on the home straight. The day to spare, I have incidentally checked that the clutch works. I had my uncle visiting and he pressed the clutch while I turned the prop and uh, we did have a clutch, so that is also good news. Cool been a successful day, gearbox is in, prop shaft is in, exhaust is in, cross member is in, everything's adjusted up, clutch works, uh, so really underneath jobs there ain't a lot else, well there's nothing I have to do, just a uh, reverse light switch tomorrow and uh, chill out I think. <laughs>